So my the video I posted the other day about my quail cage, you know, just showing what the current situation was with the, with the quail, it elicited a lot of opinions on the topic, um, specifically how I'm keeping them. And I'm not going to address all the opinions because people had some good ideas about, you know, just the setup in general and whatnot. Um, I really want to focus on, on sort of the criticisms about the cages I'm keeping them in. So there was two kinds of responses. You know, there was a very, very thoughtful and measured response, um, borderline criticism, but in a very positive sort of <laughs> way. And uh, that person had decided to, I guess, delete their own comment, which I'm not sure why. Um, but um, if you're watching this one, thank you for your feedback. I won't name names, just in case there's a reason why you deleted it. Um, but on the other hand, I had a person who not only on that video th told me I was a cruel person and basically threatened my life, um, they decided to post that same message on a bunch of my other videos. So I had a fun after, uh, evening of going around and deleting all these uh, borderline death threats from my videos, such as the life of a YouTube creator. You'd be surprised how many messed up comments I get from people, um, you know, threatening my body, mind, and soul. <laughs> uh, so... It, it created some feelings, you know, you know, people, you know, those sorts of cages, I mean, they are essentially battery cages, let's be honest. Um, and it's not ideal. All right. I had that feeling when I first started exploring the idea, I was not entirely comfortable with it. I will admit I'm still not super thrilled about it, especially now that I'm talking about increasing the amount of quail that I have. So they will be even, even tight in tighter quarters. Those battery cages are not... You know, it's from Wynola Ranch, um, and they're very good cages, and a lot of people keep quail in them, especially for, like, commercial-type situations. But even quail... So this is the thing, though. Even These aren't chickens. So people are, you know, part of the... Amongst all the death threats and whatnot, there was the suggestion that these quail should be, uh, you know, should be outside, and even the more constructive, you know, criticism, um, so, you know, was inquiring whether or not I would want to do some kind of outside setting for them. And the... The answer is no, <laughs> not really. I mean, we're talking about quail here, not chickens. Like, I wish I could have chickens. I mean, I technically can have six hens here, and I'm thinking about maybe someday having some bantams, like silkies or something, because I will admit that I miss having chickens, because chickens are so useful. It's nice to see them running around, but it's also they turn compost so well, and that is, like, a value to chickens that you can't just, like, ignore. But anyway, I'll save that for another video. I'm thinking about maybe eventually having a very small amount of chickens here. Um, which I am allowed to have some, up to six normal-sized hens, so maybe I can get away with more bantams. But in any case, um, but quail aren't chickens, and I know there, there are people online that show quail uh, kept in big hutches, or not, not, not even hutches. Um, uh, I don't even know what you'd call them. I forget what they call them for, for game birds. But in any case, big pens, big covered pens, and it allows them to fly around and move around, and that's great. Um, you know, I don't have the space, first of all. I don't have a space here for that because quail need a lot of room. Like, if you're going to give them space, they need a lot of space because they are game birds. And if for being such tiny birds, they do need a lot of space. And height, too. So it's not just, like, you know, on the ground. They need high because they're, they're going to fly around. So you need to, need to keep them in short cages or really, really tall cages. And I don't have the means to do that here. I, I really have to utilize every square inch of my property and that's part of the reason why I went with quail in the first place and also this particular way of raising them. You know, I knew they could do well in cages because quail can do well in small cages. You know, you normally keep them in very, very short cages at the very least and they can be in compact spaces. Most people that you see keeping quail, at the if they're not putting them in cages like that, then they're actually putting them in sort of like hutches, which are still very short and still not very, not a lot of, you know, floor space. They're just kept in small places, and that's part of what it is having them. And again, I know there's a there's one YouTuber that I follow, uh, self self sufficient me, tons of videos about his gigantic you know quail pen, um, and he lets them run around, and that's great if you have the space to do that, to really give them a good like ho open home like that. But it also is not particularly efficient um, in every conceivable way, watering, feeding. Um, to keep them in a big space, you then have to commit larger spaces for, you know, to have good feeding and watering systems. 
Um, they can't just be like simple, little, efficient, close quarter ones like I have. Uh, and uh, also the egg collection, you know, it's just not as efficient. And then like, I don't, you, you know, it's like, especially now that I'm, I, it looks like I'm able to sell my eggs, trying to like find them and then possibly find like old ones and not knowing if it's something's new or old. Like if quail were, were nested like a chicken, then keeping them in a pen would be that much better for me, especially like I may be able to consider some kind of pen setup, but it's just, you can't, they don't work like that. They don't work like that as far as the egg. So if you're fine going out there and doing a little Easter egg hunt and you don't care if you pick up a rotten egg here and there, great, but I'm not going to do that. I don't have the time or the energy or the focus right now to be able to just go out there and try to hunt down these eggs. Like, I don't know many people who have that sort of time and patience and are willing to take the risk. So having them in a big open space is not great. I wish they were more like chickens. I really do. I wish you can keep them contained. Now, um, but for now, I am doing the cages. And, you know, if that disturbs you, then skip over the quail videos, I guess. And try to avoid posting death threats on my videos. But, um, so it's not ideal. Look, it's not ideal. I have thought about, because I am thinking about hatching out more quail, because I, I have such a demand for eggs right now. Hatch out more um, and with the spare males that I have, I'm thinking about creating a small outdoor run for the males. That way I don't have to worry about hunting down eggs. And I'm thinking about building basically a, a compost cage that they can live in. Because quail have little tiny feet and they do scratch. So they may be able to turn compost, definitely not as well as chickens, but I'd be, I'm curious to see if quail could be used in composting. You know, they could eat little bits of whatever's in the compost, deposit their uh, nitrogen-rich goodness, so maybe that's something outdoor. Um, another thought I had is that I stick to a release after a year. So early retirement for quail. So if they have to live in these tiny cages, but I hatch out new ones every single year in the old ones, instead of you know just killing them and eating them or anything like that, or keeping them in a cage forever, I release them, I take them up to my property, um, my wilderness property and just let them go. Like they're, they're not gonna really survive in the wild anyway but they can at least live out their remaining years and they can feed the, you know, coyote population up there. You know, this is actually something that I've considered for a lot of my animals. I've done videos about it in the past, about putting them out to pasture literally as opposed to uh, killing and eating them. And that goes back to videos I've done about a meat-free homestead and all those sorts of things, where it's like, what do you do with the animals that are no longer productive if you're not gonna eat them? So that gets into a whole other topic. This video, is already gone a bit longer than I wanted to because I'm trying to keep my videos really short these days. But again, I recognize the cages are not ideal. Um, I know that that sort of cage bothers people, but given my current living situation, and I don't really have much of an other option. It's either that or not keep quail at all, which some of you I'm sure would say, yes, that's exactly what you should do. Because some of you probably don't want me to have animals at all if you are of the vegan persuasion. And I totally get that. But again, I'm trying to do what's best for myself and my family and in my property. And unfortunately, those quail cages are what they are. And maybe I'll change my mind down the road because I've been known to do that. But for now, the cages are the best system for keeping quail in a, on a small suburban lot in a nice, tight, compact space. It's just the way it is. And I'm sorry if that bothers people. Um, I will do my best to give them the best life possible and again perhaps an early retirement after a year of service. But in any case, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you're new to my channel, please be sure to subscribe. And uh, as always, thank you for joining me on this journey as I work through all this stuff.